What's up, y'all? This is Sean from Soul Circus. We are back from summer vacay and ready to funk your faces off with three great shows this weekend. Friday night, the funk train rolls through Main Street, Louisville at Stevie Ray's Blues Bar, 9 p.m. Saturday, grease gets thrown at Diamonds in St. Matthews, 10 p.m. And Sunday, get plowed on the big deck at Captain's Quarters, 7 p.m. Hang out and welcome our new drummer, Mr. Blake Mefford. Stay tuned for upcoming dates right here on Shooting from the Lift. Shooting from the Lip features views and opinions from smart, funny, serious, and not-so-serious people. This show is intended for a mature and not-so-mature audience. Enjoy the show! What is up, you people? Shooting from the Lip here this Wednesday night, July 6, 2016. It's the Shooting Stars edition. Tonight on the Wednesday night as I do the Shooting Stars episode with my man Greg Unthank. Gregory, what's up? Hey man, how are you? Did I, did I interrupt the side conversation that was going on? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was giving her the Hot Rod Haven story that I was texting you about a couple days ago. You were, it. you were, that's, that's a sound bite right there. You were giving her, I'm going to cut off the story part. You were giving her the hot rod haven. That's a sound bite right there. <laughs> that's not uh, nice. Uh, that's not nice. I've never been, nice is generally not been an <laughs> adjective or a noun in actually describing me. Here we are on this Wednesday night, back in the groove of things. I didn't do a show Monday because of the holiday. I took the night off, but I did do an archive show which was uh, a flash from the past but we are back here live alive and kicking with this edition of shooting from the lip again shooting stars where we feature local area musicians personalities venues anything and everything we can do to promote the local scene and uh greg you've been a part of the local scene for a long time Grandpa, yeah, Grandpa, Grandpa, absolutely, you, Grandpa drummer, Grandpa percussionist. That's it, man, Grandpa for sure. I've been around for a while. Uh, I know some guys that's been around longer than me that I look up to and respect, and I respect all the guys that's been around as long as me, and I respect all the up and comers. I like to show the respect for the fellow musician. It's a respect game, and uh, it is. we've got a full show tonight. First segment, we'll be talking to Jenny Carr, singer-songwriter who grew up in the uh, Shepherdsville area and now currently resides in southern Indiana. Then the second segment, we're going to have the owner of a shop called Ultra Pop, Paul LaPree. He's going to talk about his shop and an event that he's got coming up that I think is very cool. And for the third segment... One of our faves, Sean Wallace of Soul Circus, who, if you heard the promo at the beginning of the show, Sean nails the promo. And he gets it because his promo allows him to be the first promo. And why is that? You might ask, audience, why is Greg, that? Why is that or Tiffany. It's Tiffany's mic is live, too. Because why Sean, is that, when, Sean, <laughs> when Sean cuts a promo, he ends it with referencing shooting from the lip, which is a nice little segue into the beginning of the show. He figured that one out. You know, Sean he, knows how to do it. He's a rock star, he, man. He knows how to do he, it. Yeah, he's a rock star. But also with us tonight is my Friday night co-host, Tiffany Mack, T. Mack. You're coming back with or without tan lines? Um, well, since since you have to wear bathing suits in Florida for the most part, I do have tan lines. Yep. Okay. How you doing, yeah. dear? I'm doing great. Mm. Yeah, doing good. Put the kids to bed early. It's it's a, it's a good day. Oh, you're back into the real world this week. Has it been a big adjustment? Because you were gone what a little over a week, right? Yeah, I usually I usually um, go for about nine days. So yeah, yeah. about average. Yep. About average. Yeah, it's hard to be back well, though. I, you know, I had four kids with us and. Um, that is a relief, not to have the four kids. <laughs> but yeah, two of your be. own, right? Two of your own, and then, own. yeah. And, and then what, family, two, two. Other, 
others. Okay. To gotcha. others. Yeah. Are you on a time schedule, Tiffany? Kids are in Not bed, really. right? Kids well, are you know bed, what? Yeah. I do want you to promote Friday night show, but I want to kind of stay mm-hmm. with format and because we're right into mm-hmm. our first segment. So, and I don't think you've met our first guest tonight, who is a very talented singer songwriter in the local area. Someone that I have, I'm just, I'm a huge fan of, based on her voice and the way she, she performs on stage. Jenny Carr. Jenny from the block, what's up? Man, I was wondering who you were talking about for a second. <laughs> oh, whatever. Yeah. Jenny, I like, well, who's he got on this segment? This is going to uh, be cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've got Greg Unthink and Tiffany Mack. Tiffany's part of my fr- uh, my Friday night co-host, so I don't think you've officially met Tiffany, but uh, here we are all together. Well, I have now. Hi, T Mac. Hey, how's it going, Jenny? And my good friend Greg. Nice to be here with you. Yes. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm wonderful. I'm a little tired today. Long day at work and all that kind of stuff. But you know, I'm I'm ready to go. Ready to do well, it. Well, is it me or is today like Monday over Monday over Monday again? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Groundhog Day or whatever that movie was or is or whatever. So, yeah. Yes. Recurring. Jenny, man, you you're one of my favorites for the show. Oh. And actually, Tiffany, are you there? Did you go? Are you putting the dogs away? She messaged no, me. No, I'm here. Put the dog. Okay. <laughs> the female voice at the beginning that does the the you know, intro. The, the yeah. intro. This that's Jen, This is Jenny. That's Jenny. So there you that's go. That's why she sounds yeah. familiar. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's yeah, like um, in the flesh. So, Jenny, sort you've of. been lately. Yeah, sort of. We can only wish and hope for. Lately, you've been doing. You've been performing a lot. I mean, this is like a stretch of of weekends and gigs that I've seen you just continuously putting out the uh, promos, the events. You've been keeping busy, huh? I have been. Not bad for a, a half retired person, huh? I mean, I oh, whatever. I swear I'm retiring every year, you know. But uh, no, this has been you can't this has been it. a heck of a season for me. I've been busier than I ever thought I would be. Honestly, a little busier than I cared to be. But man, I am. I'm loving it. I don't know if you had a chance to look at the Facebook post <laughs> shortly before the show came on. I was kind of going through your Facebook page looking at some of your recent events, and I caught the image of the shoe. And I, <laughs> which, well, well, which one now? The four-inch heel one <laughs> that you oh, were the going red ones? You, okay. you, No, it's not. No, it wasn't red. I think it was like tan or something. Oh, the, the ones with the chains. Yeah, the chains, and I was like, uh, the I put that in the comment, and I said, uh, the shoes, the legs, and the lady will be the guest for the first segment. So, what's oh. up with those shoes? I mean, look at that. I like. Well, them. short people got to do what we got to do. Amen. So those shoes, so those <laughs> shoes instantly grew you four inches, right? Those are uh, probably those yeah, like... at least close to five. Okay. Do you wow. do you like get on stage with those? Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God! And she doesn't sit. <laughs> no She's, way uh, I'd be she able is, to do that. This Jenny has got so much. Energy. She is Jenny is the culmination of um, she can do covers. She's got a lot of original music. She's an entertainer. She's got a great voice. She's got a great look. You've known Jenny for a long time. Has this yep. chick aged any? I'm looking. I'll go back and look at pictures from Jenny, years ago. And I'm, yeah, yeah, but Jenny get Jenny gets prettier. She gets Photoshop. prettier. <laughs> she what? gets she gets prettier, and what I like about Jenny is she's I don't know Jenny. Correct me if I'm wrong uh, about your music style. You're you're kind of a, tr- a traditionalist. You I kind am. Of, you kind of stick to the traditional country, uh, and I like that because some of the older the newer country kind of tends to stray away from I guess my interests. But but yeah, you stick to the traditional country. Your even your songwriting. Uh, leans that direction. Uh, your songs lean that direction. I like that about you. And uh, and yes, you do. You you keep getting prettier each year, each show. Oh, you know. I know. Oh well, I tell you honestly tell, that. Tell your husband I said hello. Yeah. <laughs> hey, fluff. They all said hello. Fluff. Yeah, fluff. This was uh... a. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, that that comment means the world to me, Greg. It really does because though I 
yeah, I like to wear my heels and occasionally like to rock it out to some of the newer stuff every once in a while. But yeah. as far as the stuff that I write, I I really do like to keep it pretty traditional. And uh, I, I yeah. think there's probably three-quarters traditional music of my, in my show, but that doesn't mean that I don't like to turn it on every once in a while. <laughs> right, right. And, 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 but I, I think we need that. I think country music needs that. As Chris Stapleton's kind of proved it with his uh, coming of age and, and being popular and, and doing as well as he's done, the, the traditional music it needs to come come up a little bit more than, than what's been going on. You know, that cookie cutter stuff is kind of running mm-hmm. its course. I hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know, and honestly, there's there's some of it that I actually do like. It's never that I've said that I don't yeah. like that music as much as I don't like the labels that are getting slapped on stuff. Yeah. Um yeah. you know, I think that's probably my biggest my biggest issue these days is don't call it country if it's not country. Yeah, I'm and I'm yeah. with you there. I've always kind of called it I've always said it's kind of um guys who wanted to play rock but they decided to do country because you know, they could go to Nashville and maybe make it. It's like a, a pumped up Eagles, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it, mm. yeah. That's a good way to you put know. it, right? Yeah. yeah, really. You know, that's just, you know, again, my opinion. I do like some. A lot I don't like, but there is some out there I do. I like Keith Urban. You know, I think he's really talented. Um, you know, I'm not going to go down the list, but, yeah, that's how. And that's the, that's the reason you know I hate to say that I like uh, dislike all the new stuff, because then, again, I'm slapping another label on it, and I don't I don't want to do that. Yeah. So there's some so I do are like. You Sorry, that T-Mac, you're... I didn't mean to cut That's all right. So are you saying that, like, when it comes down to the crossover into pop, you're not that – fond of that either or would you be more willing to go into the pop rather than the rock i don't necessarily dislike that as much as if it's a crossover from pop then call it a crossover from pop don't mm-hmm. say that it's country yeah. that's, mm-hmm. that's i mm-hmm. guess that's my biggest issue you know one of my favorite traits with jenny is her voice she's one you could just listening to her talk she's got that raspy voice which is kind of dig that and uh and then you just to hear her sing. I mean, her voice is so flipping strong, and I've been a fan for a for a long time, and I got a feeling, Jenny, that I'm going to keep being a fan for many years to come. You're not going anywhere, so don't even talk about the R word. Retirement, uh, uh, I guess sometimes I'm just retiring ideas more than anything mm-hmm. else. Well, there you go. One reason why I reached out to you is an excuse because I. I Love to have you on the show as often as possible. But you posted something on Facebook about putting a band back together. And I thought, I hmm, that's interesting because you've been kind of doing the solo thing for how long has the solo thing been going on right now? Um, just a little over a year, about a year and a half. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's what I was thinking, over a year. So, one, why now? And two, what has triggered this change? I guess I say, why not now? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, Well, 23 years, and I've only been in two bands in 23 years, but yet I've always been in a band throughout those 23 years. I spent a little over 16 years with Pure South, and then Twang Town was right about five years. And uh, so I've never known anything really but being in bands, but I... 100% 100% enjoyed the break, enjoyed getting back to songwriting and uh, the reasons that I started in the first place. But at the same time, I was just getting to a point where I was really starting to get some good gigs rolling in. And, uh, you know, solo gigs gave me the opportunity to get in a lot of places I couldn't get a full band in and get my foot in the door in a lot of pretty cool venues. But at the same time, I was also turning down a lot of good gigs and I don't like turning down good gigs and I missed playing the state fair last year and uh I don't know I just been debating on it for a while I miss performing I I don't like being tied down to just a guitar and a mic stand uh I miss jumping mm-hmm. from speaker to speaker and things that I do right. in heels and <laughs> but uh so you, yeah it just seems you... like a good time I know Greg will get off the drums and go straddle a speaker. Do you do that, Jenny? <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> only when only I wear thing, a cape. The only thing I'm oh, straddling yeah. is a bar stool, man. I'm that's about it. <laughs> Whoa! It's been a while. I mean, I remember seeing you at the fair, but honestly, I can't remember you with the full band. I've only seen you. I mean, it's like lately, I've you you've been doing the solo thing. So that's the only thing I 
kind of got in my head. When you said, you mentioned about putting, putting the band back together, this notion of having this full sound with your voice, and I'm like, man, I, I'm I'm ready for that. I want to hear that. I want to experience that. How soon are we gonna? Is this really gonna happen? Um, I will say that within the next month, you shall you shall see the mm-hmm. first uh, postings. Cool. So things are happening as we yes, speak. Sir. This right. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that once you put it in motion, unfortunately, it's not gonna stop now. Oh yeah. <laughs> is there any information that you could share about it, or is this gonna be? You know, is this covert James Bond um, stuff until? All I can say is uh, I, I've got some really great people lined up that I've waited a while to uh, have the opportunity to work with, and it's a uh, it's a completely new group. It's not really going to be any people that uh, you know per se that are in the circles that we've that we've been in previously. So I'm I'm really excited about a whole new sound. Okay, all right, that's cool. And it's just going to be remain country. Um, this is going to remain Jenny Carr. <laughs> All right, there you go. So, uh, there you go. a little now, bit, that, but, you know. Okay, there you go. A little rough right. on the edges, probably. <laughs> is this your band, Jenny? Um, I, I would never call it that. No, it's it's everybody's band, but yes, it will be okay. my name, and uh, that's okay. what we're going to roll with. All right. Before uh, you came on, I was chairing with Greg. I was messaging. I was talking to a friend of mine who acknowledged that he was no longer in a band, and I had shared that messaging with Greg, and because these are local bands and turnover and of personnel, and you know, I was asking Greg. I'm like, because the reality is with the local bands, we're not dealing with labels or managers. We're dealing with quote unquote leader of the band, the ego of the band. How? tough is that or or how real is that when in a in a whim you gotta make a change from you know a position player in the band and is that ego driven greg or i mean where you help me try to explain what i'm no i mean at. like i was saying man it, it's different actually I, my my opinion is it's different with each band i mean you've got personalities that's got to deal with one another and uh, you know, just like anything, sometimes those personalities will clash and then hit a blow up, and and then sometimes you got a got a guy in a band who just, you know, he's ready to do something different. You know, and there's no hard feelings. Mm-hmm. There don't. There's not always got to be hard feelings involved. You know, um, but uh, just like for instance, uh, Sean Wallace, the next uh, guest coming up. Uh, I played with Soul Circus for a couple of years, about uh, about a year or so back, and. And I got a day job, which required me more time for my day job. I couldn't play with with them as much, and that's the reason I bowed out. And we're all great friends. He had a Christmas party. You know, he invited uh, all the members and ex members to a Christmas party. And you know, it's all, it just varies. It really varies. Um, and when you say egos, uh, you know that that's. I, I think once you get to a certain point, a certain level, you know, egos. People kind of learn that there's really no need for egos. <laughs> you know, uh, you, you don't get to a certain level if you, if you've got an ego. Um, you know, some of the nicest people in Nashville, uh, I've I've been told by people up there playing that if you've got an ego and you've got an attitude, you're not playing a whole lot. Uh, you get avoided. Uh, you got to be a nice mm-hmm. person. You got to be able to get along with people. Uh, to maintain playing, stay in a band, you know, people's got to enjoy you. So, you know, it, it's mm-hmm. different reasons why there's turnovers. It, it really does vary. Is, it, is that what you've noticed, Jenny? Just, you know, you really can't put your finger on one thing, you know? No, you can't. It's, uh, you know, it's constantly something different, to be honest, especially when you're uh, somewhat of the ringleader of a group. Somebody, when you're dealing with bringing mm-hmm. five people together to try to do one thing, you've always got something that's going on. Yeah, there might be an ego, then all at the same time you might have a job, and then you might have this and that that comes up, and then sometimes you just get to the end of your rope with somebody that, you know, you've done all you can do with particular groups together, and sometimes it just fizzles out. And, and it is it's, a business. It's always a multitude run it of like things. A business sometimes, too. I mean, you got to keep that in in mind, uh, everybody's got to agree to the, the direction the band is going, the business, the company is going. So, 
I think so many people forget that. People think that you're just having a good time, you're just hanging out in clubs. What in the world could go wrong when, when really just coming up with a band and putting people together, you're building that brick building right there. That is a business. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is an office. It is... It is. It's just like opening a business. Uh, you know, it's like a storefront. It's yeah. it's the same thing, and you're going into business with four, five, six different people. Yeah, and yeah. that's got to be well, up front as well. When you hire somebody, you got to yeah. say, "Hey, this is the reason we're doing this. Exactly. We want to we want to go this direction, or we're, we want to go this direction, and that's what we're you know looking for you well, to feel." Okay, uh, that's those are good points. Now, now, let me give you this example. Now, Jenny, Greg, right now. Jenny, your music, Greg, Blue Funk, you're doing original music. You have some vision of an end game, you know, where you're trying to get to. And it does require not only talent, but it does require some type of uh, creativity, you know, just to keep moving forward. Because you want to keep it fresh, you want to keep it new, real. All right, that's one thing. But when you got a band that's just doing covers... I mean, I guess that's where I'm getting at. To. Short of a guy just maybe not carrying his weight, what would constitute, you know, why would you replace someone? Guys? I'll answer, and then I'll let Jenny answer. Okay, I, I know that what I've experienced at this point in my life, being the age that I am, what would constitute somebody to be, what, kicked out of the band? Is that the question? Yeah. Uh, if, if someone other, like... Other than of attitude. I mean, what would well? Yeah, showing up late for a gig where you where you're okay. waiting for them to show up and you're supposed to be playing and they're not there yet. Uh, oh. Getting too drunk to play their instrument. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Being late for sets. Uh, not knowing the material. Um, you know, that's maybe just, the guy, maybe the drummer wearing four inch heels. Maybe you know, and, and okay. this is this is stuff that. <laughs> It should be should done happen. with okay. at our age. Seriously. At our yeah. age, you know, okay. this is stuff that we've dealt with 10, 15, 20 years ago. should be mm-hmm. dealing with it at this point. So that's that's the way I see that. What do you think, Jenny? I agree 100%. You know, in my, in my opinion, if you agreed to do a gig, you agreed to the money that you were offered for the gig, show up at the gig on time, don't gripe about it, and let's have a good time with it and move on. You know, that it's not very hard to make people happy, you know, just do what you've agreed to do and, you know, don't give anybody a hard time about it. Yeah. Well, geez, How that could be like do? anything, yeah, any kind of, yeah. any field, it could. you know. Yeah. Absolutely. Be a respectful adult. Think of, of other people mm-hmm. that you're involved with and it should go smooth. <laughs> yep. Mm. Should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We live That's in a perfect boring. world here, don't we? Yeah. yeah. What's the craziest thing that you you've ever seen on stage, Jenny? Oh my heavens! <laughs> I mean, well, hold on. From the audience like you've perspective, you've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. Well, no, I want to know okay. on as an audience member, and then I want to see and I want to hear about maybe craziest thing that you've seen with one of your band members. Okay. So, um, and, and I That's know the there's there's quite a few about, people yeah. that were present when this mm-hmm. happened, but I was playing just a solo gig. And um, it was at Rubby's, and a chick walked in with a bull whip, yeah. and she went around the bar and whipped everybody by request. And uh, when she was wow. done whipping everybody, she uh, whipped her britches right off and stuck her <clears throat> song parts <laughs> right up on each side of my microphone as I was singing. You mean like the stand part, like the oh like yes, the sir. Okay. Oh, yes. I love yes. this. this. Mm-hmm. Please tell me what this is on YouTube or place? somewhere. Uh, uh, honey, I wish it was Rubbies. because we would be famous. <laughs> and I live mm-hmm. so close to Rubby's and I wasn't there. Rubby. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, what everybody said was the funniest part is I never missed a note. I just kept right on going. <laughs> the Jenny's show must wrong. go on. <laughs> She's a pro. I would have been snorting and snorting I and snorting and falling over. And Oh yeah. At that point, Jenny, were were you? You didn't feel disrespected, did you? Because to me, it was like. Oh, you get to the point when the entertainer's got to be entertained too, you know. Yeah. I mean, I I was quite entertained by the whole thing. I was like, "Are you kidding me? This is pretty freaking funny." That's awesome. (laughs) Cool. Yeah, I'd like to see a YouTube video about that. 
I wish. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, it's one of those things, maybe for shits and giggles, Jenny, we recreate the scenario. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Only if Greg wears the song. Yeah. Uh-oh. We're on to something. <laughs> That's going to happen. <laughs> uh Okay, so, you, so the uh, next one was the next one was the the okay. craziest thing that one of your band members has done. Or we could do a whole show on this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Greg, you, you got one for this one? Oh, I've got one for all of them, but uh. <laughs> I mean, I'm <laughs> well, just trying to narrow it down to a couple. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I remember playing. And I'm not going to mention the venue or the the band or the member but I know this particular band member had to pee so bad. And up on this particular stage, there was an um, obstruction towards the rear of the stage where you could actually walk behind. And he walked behind that obstruction and relieved himself and and, and felt pretty good uh, about it once he got done. uh, Well, we could, was, let me ask this question, Greg, was, the band still having a per- percussionist continuing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't me. Okay, so we can rule you me. out then. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't me. <laughs> wasn't me. Was me. And, and as far as the the crowd, uh, years ago, this I have to tell this. I'm sorry. I, I'm going to apologize uh, in advance. Uh, <laughs> I was playing this club, and I was in a real. The band was a real young band, bunch of young guys, and. And we played this particular place, and, and it ended up being a biker crowd, which was, you know, at that time we were we were kind of like, oh my gosh, we're playing in front of a bunch of bikers, but and, and they kind of seen that we were were young guys, a green green type band, and and uh, we were playing, and, and a couple, a, a biker couple, a, a, a man and a woman, kind of walked up to the dance floor, was dancing, kind of ornery and stuff, and she ended up pulling his pants down, and fondled him in front of the band while Lord. like like a display and, and it kind of embarrassed us you know a little bit but they just had a big old smile on their face and was just laughing about it and the whole crowd was laughing and you know <laughs> I've never seen anything like that since <laughs> that was pretty anything odd. specifically anything is in that thing since or well, you know, yeah. <laughs> let's just leave it at let's just leave it at that. <laughs> oh mercy. You asked. Um, you asked, right? We asked, yeah. Yeah, yeah. On this show, uh you know, uh, facts are optional or it's encouraged but it's optional. So. I'll go um this. Well Jenny, share with us what's what's coming up on your uh, your agenda in the next within the next oh, month. It's- See, um, this Friday, I am at the Friday Fest over at Highview Park over off of Outer Loop. Um, I had a blast last time I got to do this with the Juice Box Heroes, and this week I get to do it with Billy Billy Goat Strut Review, so this should be pretty interesting. It's it's always a really neat mix of music over there, so uh, it's kind of like I come on and do a set, and then they come on and do a set, then I'll come back on, and we kind of switch off throughout the night, so you get a really neat mix of music there. Then I head back to um, to Rough River on the 15th uh, to play at the, the resort up there. And then we get ready to head back to Oklahoma to uh, finish up the vocals on the new album. So I'm excited Sweet. about it. Awesome. Yeah. Tell us, tell us about that. How long have you been doing the, the album? Well, honestly, it's been about five years in the making because it's literally oh, okay. been five years since the last one came out. And uh, we've really, really started working on it about a year ago. Yeah. I started gathering the music that, you know, I figured this this could be the last album I ever get an opportunity to make. So I really wanted to make Here sure Here we that go. Here we go with I, this Hey, you never know. Crap. Well, I never I mean, expected in, to make the first life. one. But <laughs> yeah, in, in general, life, why, we never Why know. Oklahoma? Why Oklahoma? Is there a... Uh, Someone you know out there that has a studio, it's doing you a no, good job. No, to be honest, I I didn't want to come out sounding like a lot of the stuff I've heard coming out of Nashville lately. Even right. even working in you know the the bigger venues and and even some demos and things that I've heard coming out, everything seems so 
like mm-hmm. you said earlier, cookie cutter and mechanical. And I, yeah. honestly, I just wanted to get as far away from that as I could. So you shopped mm-hmm. around for different studios? Is that what you did? I ran into these guys, honestly, about 10 years ago when I was opening, the second time I opened up for Neil McCoy was when we actually met these guys. And um, we kind of kept in touch for a couple years, back and forth, and I ended up going out there to make the first album, and I I couldn't have, I didn't have any complaints with what I got back out of them and the fact that they let me have full creative control over the music, and I just really couldn't beat that. So I I wanted to do it go back again well good deal look forward to it Jenny I listen to you talk I, I'm still fixated with the, the raspy voice now all I need is for you to have a, a whip at the next gig and my fetishes <laughs> will be complete <laughs> I can see Kevin blowing up his tender account after the broadcast I will Don't start matter. setting up a special mic stand on the side Jenny's a Jenny's a inspiration for me every night, and I digress. So. <laughs> Jen, I love her. that's my girl. I mean, I mean, Greg, you know this, and I, I'll single out because from a female perspective, I mean, she's a great entertainer. But from from a female perspective, she is the total flipping package here. Oh. And, I mean, she, no, and the, but what even more uh, important about Jenny? Music aside, she's the sweetest, the best person, and uh, so it's it's the Jennies of the world you root for every day to make her mark. And I don't, Jenny always has a place on this show. She knows that. Oh, thank you. At least yeah. I've got you fooled. <laughs> and I am serious. Anybody that can dance in heels that that high, I, I am fully <laughs> impressed. Oh, yes. <laughs> Why, thank you. <laughs> All right, Jenny, uh, share with us real quick your social media before we let you go. Well, I'm on Facebook, like most all superstars are, right? Um, right. Under uh, <laughs> Jenny Carr Music. Also, you can go to JennyCarr.com. And uh, I'm on Reverb Nation and do the Twitter thing and all that stuff. So you can just search the name. You'll find me somewhere. Jenny from the block, uh, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. And uh, Yeah, I appreciate you all. Tiffany, it was so great to hang out with you. And uh Greg, I sure appreciate you always. And Kevin, you know I love you. Yeah, I love you too, baby. Well, it was nice to finally meet you, though. Well, After maybe one day in so person. Times. Yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely. Well, Thank I'll you all together. so Jenny, much. Take care, baby. You too. See you all. Bye, Jenny. Bye-bye. It's one of my faves, Greg, Tiffany. Yeah. Um, She's yeah, so big, girl. She is so Yeah, it's us. Actually, Tiffany is kind of a South Big girl before she went to the Jeffersons. You know, <laughs> be big, moving on up. <laughs> you moving on up. So Wheezy, yeah. Well, before we let we before we let Wheezy go, and I've got Paula Pre on hold waiting for the next segment. Tiffany's going to tell us about the Friday show, the KT Unearthly show that she and I do on Friday nights, the Paranormal Variety. Share with us, Tiff, what's going on Friday night. So Friday we have a, an interesting show coming up on something that is very new to me and to Kevin. It's about a guy who is a doctor, and he actually has been working with patients who have diagnosed their own cancers and illnesses through dreams. And we actually have one of the ladies who has experienced this, and they'll both be on the show, Dr. Larry Burke and um, Suzanne DeGro- DeGregorio. <laughs> I can't talk tonight. But they're going to be on to d- discuss it. And it's probably going to be a little bit different from our regular paranormal episodes. I think it'll still be very interesting. So if anybody's interested in sort of the metaphysical world, holistic healing, um, that right. type of thing. So, God, I don't know. It should be interesting. Uh, I'm it's, sort of it's baffled different. by this it, whole right. idea. It is, is it's it, very different. Yeah. It's like we threw yeah. a curveball into our show, but to me, it's really it's got 
yeah, it's it, it's going to get deep, and I'm looking forward yeah, to. It, I think so, so too. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and it has to do it has to do with healing in a more natural way. So if right. you have cancer, it's not go to chemotherapy and and get radiation. There's they're trying to show that you can cure your cancers or put yourself into remission by using your your own body to heal yourself and and all more more natural products um, and applications. So. It should be um, really good for anyone who has either suffered from a, a, a really bad illness or had someone who's who's um, endured this as well. So right. maybe a Could little bit more be, serious uh, than we're usually trying to, you know, entertain. It, it's going to be a more serious show. Mm-hmm. Could there be a so. spiritual attachment to this? Maybe there could be. There could be. Yeah, um, there could be. And, right. and, yeah, and um, it, it should be. I don't know. It's a. I don't know. I'm 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 sort of baffled by this whole process. But um, let's just say we're going to take um, a chance and learn something new. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So. so. All right, T Mac. Uh, thanks for hanging out with you. us. And uh, you guys, you have a wonderful evening. Yeah. I'll holler at you tomorrow. All righty. Uh, Bye, guys. Me. Jenny Carr came on, killed it. Good stuff. I mean, it's it's um, I, I like talking that deep band behind the scenes stuff, and you know, <laughs> we, we yeah, and, and probably causing a little controversy with some of the questions. But hey, you know, I'm all about a TMZ moment. Yeah. Right? No, I think you were pretty safe with the questions. I think uh, uh, they were covered uh, pretty pretty accurately, man. All right. Our next guest uh, put his mic into live mode, Paul Apri. Paul is yep, I'm the here. owner. He is the owner of Ultra Pop. Paul, what is up, man? Hey, how you guys doing? Hey, Paul. How are good? you, sir? I'm good, good. Thanks for having me. Thanks, man. What's uh, Ultra Pop Shop all about? Well, um, I've been in business. It'll be nine years on the Seventh, I think I'll be celebrating my nine years, and um, I wow. sell collectible toys and local art and just weird knickknacks and pop culture inspired stuff that no one really needs, but you know, <laughs> luckily enough, people want. So I'm still in go. business at this point. That's most of the stuff I'm interested in. Exactly. Yeah. The stuff yeah. I don't need, you know. Yeah, it's it, yeah, it's you got to still there's still a huge uh demand for those who want things versus needing yeah. things. So yeah, uh, there you oh, go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and um Ultra Pop, 9 years? Really? 9 years? You yeah, yeah, it'll be 9 in? years in just a couple of days, believe it or not. Wow. All right. Well, that's cool that we're kind of timing-wise um uh-huh close to it. So, um but Greg, I was, you know, and I, part of this show is, you know, I do pay attention to my, you know, Facebook is a primary driver for what, you know, where I find either topics or guests. And there was an event that uh, I guess, yeah, Paul posted, you know, hosted by Ultra Pop that I thought was so cool. It's the event is called the Beautiful Ones. It's a tribute to Prince and David Bowie, and you know huh. these are two two of the two very talented, very talented people in our generation. Greg, I mean, I'm 49. You know, we're, we're who who had musical, you know, influence on, you know, they made their mark. They're in, no, they absolutely. influenced this. You know, so. Paul, tell us about the this event. How did this event come about, and um, what's the um, driving factor? Well, initially, initially, I was approached three or four months about uh, three or four months ago about doing a David Bowie tribute show, and um, I thought it'd be a great idea just because of the the artistic opportunities. You know, uh, the the thing the thing that I think Prince and Bowie both share in common is that they they have so many different personalities that they've created throughout their musical career. You know, there's like 18 or 20 
visual representations you could choose from for both of those artists, probably more. Um, so initially I was approached about Bowie and I had scheduled to do a Bowie show in uh, July and then the untimely demise of Prince happened mm-hmm. and that hit me really hard on an emotional level, more so than I ever possibly thought I would be affected by the death of someone who I didn't really personally know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so actually this person suggested to me that we integ- integrate Prince into the theme, which you know I was totally on for because uh, after he had passed, I actually thought you know in the back of my mind, damn, I wish I would have scheduled a Prince show. So it just kind of worked out that we could combine the two, and um, I think it's shaping up. It's going to be a pretty big, pretty big show. I think I'm going to have a lot of uh, uh, participation on oh. this one. People seem pretty excited about it. So, so uh, this is Greg. So, uh, is the show going to be at your at your store? I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be at the shop on Saturday from uh-huh. uh, 6 till 10 is the opening. And then the show will remain up for a month. So if you can't make it out to the opening, then, you know, you'll have the rest of the month to come and check out the work. Oh, okay. Uh, so so what, it, what is it exactly? Is it artwork? Um, yeah, mostly uh, art. I mean, uh, mostly uh, uh, paintings, uh, sketches, uh mm-hmm. I haven't seen any 3D representations turned in yet, but I never really know till the day before the show what's going to turn up, especially when I do group shows because there's so many different people involved. Yeah. Um, I usually have people calling me the day of asking me if I can squeeze their work in somewhere. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that you probably had to put the word out pretty early and uh, you know to get to get uh, get it all together. I would assume as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. How long? How long? Actually, pause. Good question. How long did this all come about? I mean, how long has it been in the, the, the Bowie, making? The Bowie show. I think I started. It, I mean, it's out. safe to say it's safe to say you didn't start the tribute until they both were passed, and that's right. Yeah, <laughs> Prince has been gone about two months now. I think close to it's it. Been, yeah, close to yeah. Um, so yeah, I, you, I mean, I normally don't plan. I mean, I usually, I have two or three group group shows a year that are kind of set in stone. I have a Halloween show and I have a triple X art show in February. That's a one night only event. And those I've been doing for seven, eight years. So people generally know that those are coming up. Um, and you know, you really couldn't ask for two artists, you know, it's sad of the circumstances, of course, but you know the two artists that's involved here. They're they're very visual, you know, very oh, yeah, impressive extremely. and very visual, man. I mean, they, they like you said before, they all went through many changes during their career, uh, you know, and it was always uh, what are they going to do next? You know, it was always one of those type of things. So you've probably got an abundance of uh, uh, of uh, work to show. You know, I I can just imagine oh, yeah. all the, the, well, the, the and- different eras. Be yeah, because it's not the just career. with these two, with Prince and David Bowie. It's just not music. It's their look. No, exactly. It's right. It's the their, cultural yeah. imprint. Yeah. Exactly, because it, it, you're you're talk. These two guys oozed sex in so many different levels too. I mean, it is. Mm-hmm. There's so much to work with here. Go ahead. Oh yeah. So, well, no, I was just going to say, you know, their influence, their influence transcends beyond just what they recorded musically in their life. I mean, the cultural footprint that the two of them both left on society. I mean, you know, the whole the whole androgyny. The, can we cuss on this show? Is this a Absolutely. I need to be, it's, watch it's my internet. language. Bring you know the, the it, whole bro. you know the whole the whole don't give a fuck attitude. You know, you can right. uh, you can wear makeup, you can wear heels, you can, you know, wear assless pants, you can mm-hmm. confuse people with your sexuality and your identity. And you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, I think that's one of the first things Prince taught me growing up was that, you know, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what other people think. Yeah. You know, just mm-hmm. be yourself. He obviously didn't care. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and, and they were doing it. That, they were living it. They were living it. Yeah. They weren't just doing it to get the publicity, bad or no. good. They actually were living that, you know? Yep. That's who they were. Okay. That's great. Now, this uh, um, this event is actually this coming su- Saturday, correct? Yes. July yes. 9th, right? From 6 to 10. Yes, the 9th. At your From shop. 6 to 10. Ultra, yeah. Ultra Pop on Barrett or 960 Barrett Avenue that you've been doing for nine years. How well, I've been in this we... location for three. I've been in this location okay. for three. I was on Bardstown Road for six. Okay. Gotcha. But yes, yeah, what's your area interested? for that? It is. What's Thank your. You Go ahead, Greg. You said no, the I, perfect I, area. I was, I was the, that's the perfect area for that, for that type of store for sure. Mm hmm. Um, yeah, Phil, yes, yes, still? I'm here. I'm sorry. Oh, oh. What's the expected turnout? What do you What are you looking at numbers wise? Well, I mean, it's always hard to say. You know, the the whole Facebook event thing. There's like over 500 people interested, and uh, yeah, I'm looking at that. Yeah, I th- I think a hundred and some odd people attending. I think it's going to be a packed house. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the Triple X show is always a packed house. The Halloween show is always a packed house. And I think that this is going to be, uh, I think it's going to be, you know, uh, elbow to elbow, butts to nuts in the shop. I'm going to start That's turning tonight. AC down low early in the day so that when the store ends up full of people, it doesn't end up being 90 degrees in here. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know I'll what? be playing Tonight. music by both artists all night, and possibly some video and some you know live stuff and whatever I can really find to stick with the mood. Very cool. Very cool. Now, yeah. see, Greg, when when I saw the this event, obviously Prince, David Bowie, I thought this is a cool thing. I reach out to um, to Paul and say. Bring him on our Wednesday show, which our Wednesday show we focus on local music venues, etc. Now I can't lie. His Triple X show that he's got when is that? That's always uh, in February. It's within a week of Valentine's Day. Oh, ah. February. I gotta wait. It's all about the time. Yeah, I usually do it. I usually try to do it the weekend before Valentine's Day. So if you actually want to buy some filthy art for a loved one, you can pick it up at the show and give well, it to them the next week. Let's call it you and I will art. Inspirational art. <laughs> right. Yeah, you I mean, and I not will to steer definitely... attention away uh, from the Prince show, but um, you know, mm-hmm. I have to. I paper up the windows and. You know, it's 18 and up, and there's no children allowed, and I've I've seen some pretty extreme um, stuff hanging on the walls. Wow. Yeah, I, I would guess for legal reasons you don't want kids there. Um, no, I, I started paper in the windows <laughs> when I was on Bardstown Road because there was a church across the street. Yeah, and, and you, uh, you don't want to cause the, the church to, you know, either uh, get upset or get... Um, you know, inspired. So, um, well, well, and the problem is it's always on a Saturday night and I'm usually too hung over the next morning to like take all the paper or take to take all the, all the art down. Um, well, I'll, I'll, I'm, so, I'm going to throw this out there for you. How about this? Let's, uh, let's stay. Cause I, I like, I definitely like this tribute to Prince and David Bowie. I like that, and, and I'm actually going to do my best to swing by and check it out. Yeah, you can so right make sure you introduce Yeah, what yourself. I want to do, because it is Saturday, what I want to do is uh, for Halloween, as Halloween gets closer, I'm going to help you promote your Halloween gig, yeah. and then come at the beginning of the year, God willing, that we, we still have a podcast, we'll be promoting your... 3x show so yeah you know. if we're still all alive we'll do that there we go but first things first let's let's pay yeah. homage to to prince and mr bowie oh, um sure. definitely a, a very cool gig that you got coming up this weekend um give us uh real quick how people could um connect with you on social media I think that the I think the Ultra Pop Facebook page is Ultra Pop Shop. 
I think my Instagram is also Ultra Pop Shop. And I think my Twitter is Ultra Pop or is uh, Ultra underscore Paul. Ultra Paul. There's a lot, had sound like a lot of ego put into that name. Actually, that's a nickname that was given to me when I uh, started to DJ again several, <laughs> uh, probably six, seven years ago. Um, okay. That title was kind of bestowed upon me by my friends and customers. Okay. I mean, and but it if just, you're it ultra, kind of makes me feel like a superhero. Exactly, but you know, the truth is, if you're ultra Paul, yes, it's then it's true. If it's you know factual, it's not like you're bragging or anything. No, if I'm not with the evil doers, then I'm I'll fight them. But I can't guarantee which side I'm going to be on on a given night. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's all about the given night. All right, man. The beautiful ones, a tribute to Prince and David Bowie. Yes, Paul please Capri. come out if you can. It's going to be a banger. Yeah. Ultra Ooh, Pop, we'll 960 there, sure. Barrett Avenue. Greg, you and I don't get out too much to uh, do these kind of events. We need to do something like it. I click that I'm interested in going, but I think I'm going. So, yeah. Thanks, well, thanks for coming on and too. hanging with us. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, tonight. anytime, yeah. anytime. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks for having me, All right. guys. Absolutely. Thanks, thanks, Have man. a good night. You All too. Right, take care, bye. All right. Paul LaPree, owner of Ultra Pop. It was 960 Barrett Avenue, Louisville, Kentucky, for the Saturday gig. It's the beautiful ones, a tribute to Prince and David Bowie, a lot of art, music. Actually, I mean, there's a lot that can be associated with, I mean, we talked about this, Greg, with these two guys, because they just, it was more than music with these guys. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely more than music, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, they they changed their look, like I mentioned earlier, yeah. you know, constantly, and they and they lived it. it. It wasn't that they were just doing it to to try to get the attention. They were the way they yeah. lived. Talent is talent, right? Right, exactly. And then, speaking of talent, our last guest for tonight is the talented, soulful, the guy that plays on the big deck. Sean Wallace of Soul Circus. Sean, what is up? Que pasa, mi amigos? Hey, man. Mm-hmm. How are you guys? What's up, bro? Good. Living a dream? So, uh, well, we know that, Greg. So here's the deal. I noticed in the last Speak. segment y'all talked about uh, Prince and David Bowie yep. oozing stacks. Right. Obviously, Kevin, you have not seen me on stage, but you can ask mm-hmm. Mr. Greg Unthink. He had to stare at my ass for about a year. Oh, and yeah. occasionally I pull, and occasionally I pulled my pants down for him. So, you know, look, I'm telling you right now, you talk about losing some sex, I got you on handle. Right, you on. Hey, well, and here's the thing, right though, man. Know. I didn't even think he had an ass because, you know, he had a lot of loose loose uh, drawers back sure. there. But, then when, yeah. but when he would pull those drawers down for me to see, it, it, it would take all concentration away from the drums, and, and it was all I could do to hold it together. Dude, it's the cute. We, we call it high and tight. It's the cutest little ass you ever seen. It is. It is. It's, ah. a, it's a pretty little butt, man. It really is. <laughs> so basically, what I have what I have heard is that when I show up to a Soul Circus show, I need my seat to be right next to the drummer. Man, the oh, drummer man. gets the view that nobody gets. Mm-hmm. Right, I want to do it? that's the view I want, man. Then because I can still hear Sean singing. I just want to see <laughs> what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, now, man. That's right. Now, Greg, hey. you recently uh, jammed with these guys for a couple of dates because I of a, I guess, of a, a drummer issue. But I do, I did hear, a issue. yeah, on Sean's promo. Sean, I was sharing with Greg. Did you hear the promo at the beginning of the show? And I don't think Greg heard it because he was still he was talking behind the scenes. But I said. Right. Sean Wallace Soul Circus promo and Sean's promos get on at the beginning of the show. And Greg is like, why is that? Because Sean he's gets on point. It. He's on point and right. he mentions shooting from the lip. It's the last thing he says, the words shooting from the lip, which would be a, the right segue to the beginning of the show. So Sean will always have carte blanche to the beginning of the the show it's the first voice we why, hear on a first why, Wednesday night that yeah. is why sean will always say shooting from the lips <laughs> i think exactly. every kind of pro and any kind of pro that does promo for a radio station or for a podcast 
is always going to try to use the podcast or the radio station's name in the promo. Exactly. It just, it, 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 you know, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Exactly. It. He, just, he just gets it. it. He does get it. And, yeah. you know, I have not been to a Soul Circus event. But what shame I've on been you. Doing, it is. It is total fucking shame <laughs> on me. But what I've done is, here's the thing. I've gone and seen all these YouTube videos. It's like, man, it's like, I have seen so much where it's like now I've got to get to a I've got to see it from you know beginning to end because I'm I'm hearing the vibe I'm seeing the reaction in the, of the crowd you, you you guys are putting on a show Sean you you know that you've got your audience but what what well, you're saying, think, like, bring it on what what is so special about Soul Circus. You know, I think it's it's more about a feeling. Uh, even with the music, yeah. I think you know. Obviously, Greg understands it uh, and knows that that we don't play a song like you hear it on the radio. We try to add the right. dynamic that creates emotion. So, um, you know, whether it's really really pulling back and then really hitting hard, or or you know, even songs that there is no there is no dynamic. Take Take Kiss by Prince. There's no dynamic in that song. It's the same way through the entire song. And, you know, we'll peel back during the uh, verses, and then when you hit the chorus or when you hear that, you know, he goes, I think I want to dance. Uh, da, 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 da. We actually, I mean, we pump that up so hard, and we get yeah. people jumping and dancing. And if you've got to, people, I have nothing against guys that play songs like the album. There's a couple of bands in this town that do that, and they are absolutely incredible at it. That's what they do. But what we do is all my guys, they go, I tell them to go learn a song. They go learn the song. And then they come in and we play it, and I'm like, that's cool. And I throw it out the window, and I play it the way you feel it. And then you create a totally different dimension to a cover song um, where the band actually feels what they're doing. It's as long as you keep the feel of the song right, you know, to keep it uh, pure to the way that it was recorded. Other than that, do what you want. You change that bass line up a little bit. You change that drum line up. Change your guitar parts a little bit. Do what you want to do as long as it's tasteful. I have no problem with it. So we create, and then when we get into our music, it translates to the crowd. Sometimes the crowd's not digging what we're doing. I'm just like, all right, you know what, fuck it. Let's just play what we want to play, and we're going to do it. And we mm -hmm. really get into the music. We're not paying attention to what's going on before you know it, the dance floor's packed. Because they right. feed off of our energy. That's what's different. Uh, Sean, how much of your music right now is original versus cover? Uh, it's, it, I'd say 99% cover. Um, really? Okay. Because, well, you know, we were on our way to producing some original material, um, and then of remember course we that, lost yeah. our drummer. So we're, okay. we're, we're, we, we've lost our drummer, so now we're kind of backing up and punting and getting our new drummer with getting him, get all the cover music down first, and then we'll go back through mm -hmm. and start with, with the original material again. So it's kind okay. of a, it's cool. a process because I can't tell a guy to go learn uh, Use Me by Bill Withers, and he can't come in and play it cold with us. He, he's mm -hmm. got to understand the dynamics and the way we change the song because we don't do it like the album. So it takes a while for them to get set with our cover songs. So it's, it's, it's a longer process uh, right. for guys to learn our songs than it is if they were just to learn them on the radio and go play for another average cover band. Well, you got to say, unthank. Uh, Absolutely, you know, uh, my experience with, uh, you know, going in and playing those songs like he's talking about, you know, he, he pretty much, uh, or they pretty much, you know, they say, here's the song, uh, you know the structure, now this is how we do it, and you cop a feel to how we do it, and when I joined up with the band, uh, Sean and the guys were very open to what I'd done, I brought in a few ideas on how I felt about things, and as long as everybody you know, everybody seemed to agree with it and go with it. It, it worked. As long as it works, it works, you know. Um, and, and that was the whole base, basis to the songs, you know, just uh, have a good time with them and play them this way, and, and, and the crowd will like them, you know. Um, and that's another thing, you know, Soul Circus was, I mean, it's one of the funnest bands I ever played in, and everybody had fun on stage at all times. And, and, and like he said earlier, the crowd feeds on that, and then it's it's a big mm -hmm. circle when they're when they're feeding from us, having a good time. Then we feed off of them, enjoying us, you know. And uh, 
Yeah, it's a, it was a, a really it's a really fun band, and shame on you for not being out to see them, man. Because uh, yeah, Brett. it's a really really great show, man. <laughs> I'll be honest. A lot of times, you know, if we even if we even play, I mean, occasionally with as many shows that we play, occasionally we don't play to a lot of people. I mean, it doesn't happen very often anymore. But every once in a while, there won't be a lot of people in the room, and we still have a good time. I mean, yeah. we, oh, we I, don't. I can get that. We still from have you fun in the band. Yeah. yeah. And uh, actually, you play. You're playing at Captain Quarters, Captain's Quarters Sunday. Yes. As you info, yeah. info, infamously uh, say that you're on the big deck. Oh and yeah, you're I mean, right on a big a, deck. It's, an ex, it's an extension of yourself as the crowd comes in to witness Sean Wallace and the 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 you know the soul. Is it really the funk is train? It, Wait a minute. I know it's a funk train. Is it Sean Wallace really and Soul Circus, or how how no how much no you come on you know, Sean no, and, and you, you know dude you want to know why and and I've told all the guys this and even when Greg was with us it's the way that it is when you see our band nobody's really the star the the band is the star and and everybody gets their moment to shine you know almost every song. I mean, we mm-hmm. we will extend out songs, and you know, I want everybody to be a part of the band. You know, my saxophone player, he can yeah, go out right. in the middle of the crowd and rock them. You know, the the drummer's <laughs> going to get a solo shirtless. The the bass player's going to get a solo and and five or six different songs, eight songs. Sometimes we don't even do a solo in the middle of something, and I'll be like, you know what, bring it down. I make the band bring it down. I'm like, come on, Earl, thump your way through. You know, it, it's kind of with us. It's everybody is the star of the show and yeah most people associate me with the band that's because myself and my dad have been here from the beginning but right. you know the thing is, is and I handle all the business side of it but no everybody's a star in this band and that's the way I, I would like to keep that you know and keep that idea and mentality of we're, we're all a, a band of brothers and nobody's more important than the next guy well said very true I mean, I couldn't now, do it without a bass player. I couldn't do it without a drummer. I couldn't do it without, you know, I, I, I wouldn't want to do it without a saxophone player. And now Mike Hood on the organ, I wouldn't want to do it without Mike Hood anymore. It's just not I mean, what I what want to you, do. You are, is it a six-piece band? We're seven-piece band. Seven, yeah, it's a seven. Yep. Wow. Seven, and, yeah, two. Yeah, I, I've got to get out to these. Cause, and you've got a full weekend coming up. Right, Friday. Yeah, we Saturday, we got Friday, Friday. and CB uh, Ray Saturday, Diamond St. Matthews, and Sunday at CQ. We took a couple of weeks off, and I told the boys, you know, it, of course, it, it just so happened we took a couple of weeks off when we kind of lost our drummer at the same time, so it worked out. But uh, I told the boys, I'm like, you know, grab grab your testicles and pull them up tight because we're getting ready to, to float on this punk ship, and it ain't gonna slow down no time soon. Now earlier in the show. We were talking about band turnover, and mm-hmm. if you don't mind me asking, you can answer it if you want. If you don't, you you can decline. I'm an open what, book. What caused the turnover with this particular uh, uh, performer? Why? Uh, why the turnover? My, my drummer. Or drummer, I guess. In this case. <laughs> yeah. Well, this case, the, the drummer, the drum. he, he he got arrested. Yeah. So I mean, he he left mm-hmm. my we. Here's the deal. We had a we have a, a brother project called Wallace and the Groove Hounds, and it's the right. same members of the band. We're just we're targeting a different audience, right. um, and we, that's mostly of our originals. And we were you know doing what we did. We had a big show planned. We worked five weeks on it. It was a, an hour and a half nonstop in your face, literally nonstop, no no stops between songs. We got the whole show down. He left here on his last practice. Uh, going home, this was two days before the, the George Clinton concert, and uh, mm-hmm. he got pulled over, went to jail. He wasn't getting out anytime soon. So that's where it's like, okay, we got to call. I had to call Greg, which isn't a problem, uh, other than Greg didn't know any of the material that Wallace and the Group House does. Right. So we had to change him to Soul Circus gigs. Now, here's the main problem with that. The main problem with that is the next night, Friday night, we played, we headlined the uh, Germantown Blues Festival. Now, mm-hmm. we did a Soul Circus gig, 
And we absolutely slaughtered it. I mean, the place was packed. People were dancing, going crazy, sweating, you know, the whole night. Right. But the thing is, that was the, that uh, there were several people there interviewing me from as far away as Atlanta for festivals. And the thing is, is since we didn't play the music that we were going to play in Wallace and the Groove Hounds, and they all told me, dude, you absolutely slaughtered the gig. You killed it. I'm, but the thing is, it's just not the music that we want. So it literally put me a year behind. That one oh, myth that... Put, put put Wallace and the Group Hands a year behind because I can't get those festivals now until next year. I mean, I, I, I there, we were well on our way. There, therefore, there was a change in personnel. Absolutely. Right. Change in personnel. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and I waited to get band pictures because a lot of the members of the band, I wasn't sure if they were going to stick around long term. And I waited. Now, this group that I had now with this previous drummer, they're not going anywhere. I know these guys are going to stay. I mean, you just got a feeling about them. You know what's going to happen. I went and got band shots done, and then now the drummer gets arrested. You got to make a change. So now I'm going to have to Photoshop his ass out of the pictures. I love him, but he, he would still this, be there if it wasn't for this. It wasn't by his choice, right? It, that's exactly right. He would still be here. So yeah. you know, well, sucks. Yeah, he just made a made a mistake. Yeah, I guess yeah. in a sense. It's, it I, I, sucks, yeah, man. I, I, I would say that that he made a mistake. Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, well. So, but a pre- previous turnover, you know, it is with a band like us. It's a couple of things is why you know why you have high turnover, and we have had some turnover in the past five years, and a lot of it, a lot of it, I'll be honest, is due to scheduling. A lot of the guys that I've lost in the band couldn't stay. Well, a couple of guys got picked up by National Act, so you know you can't fault them for that. No, but no. Uh, but but the other guys are like, man, you know, as they put, I, I went with younger guys in the beginning. In the beginning of the band, my dad was the old guy. Everybody else was in their mid twenties besides me. And mm-hmm. as these guys start to progress in their careers, and we're playing two to four times a week, they're like, man, I, I just can't do the schedule anymore. I'd post a new schedule for a year and a half out. We literally had booking, you know, eighteen months away. And they're like, man, they got they freak out. And like, I can't do it anymore. I'm like, I totally understand. You know, even Greg, he had to leave the band because he got a promotion at his work. Couldn't do it anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he couldn't do two to four nights a week. And I don't blame him. It's tough. It's tough on me to play two to four nights a week sometimes. And, you know, but for me, I want to keep my bandmates as busy as possible. And the reason is I don't have to worry about having bandmates. I don't have to right. worry about A, go. getting a replacement if I yeah. need to, or B, I don't have mm-hmm. to worry. They don't have to go play with four different bands in order to fill their schedule mm-hmm. up. They can be as busy right. as they want to be with us. Because the reality, Greg, is think about all the people who are on the show here, who come on our shows musician-wise. I'm thinking every one of them do have day jobs, that these are not their... 24-7 sole income gigs. Is that safe to say from the people we've yeah, had? Yeah, I would say most of them. I would say most okay. of them. Yeah. I don't, I'm trying to think who would have been. I, I've but... only got one guy, and I've only got one guy in my band that his sole uh, money income is music. The rest mm. of the guys, the other guys that they have day gigs. And yeah. cool. they do the schedule and keep up because they want to stay, stay busy playing music. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, and so hmm. so what he's trying to say, Sean, is as much as they play uh, mo- more than any other band in town, there's really no excuse that you haven't seen them yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I have not. I don't have to <laughs> because the truth is, I I have to admit I've seen. Uh, you know, Soul Circus name, Wallace and the Groove Out. I've seen them come up. It just seemed to have come up against some of my, at the time, other type, other favorites or whatever. Or, right. you know, if I, you know, it, it's not a disrespect because the thing is with the, it, it, once I got to start talking to Sean, I realized Sean and I could go, me, Sean and I can go to a morgue and have fun. That's how I perceive. That's how I gauge his personality. I we would I'd just start hit dead, dead people's nipples. I mean, I'm going to have a good exactly. Time. It'd be fun. We would just make it funny. And uh, but yeah, I've got to this weekend. He's got three gigs this weekend. I got to find a way to get 
to see my man Sean. So, and Greg, well, we you need love, to go with. Yeah. Yeah, Greg. Yes, sir. Do you have wife's permission to come out and play, Greg? Uh, probably. Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> okay. And the good the good All thing right. is is we're 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 trying out our new drummer this weekend, and he's uh he's real he's a young cat, and he's uh. He's uh, really been busting his hind end to to get these songs down, and he's real, real nervous about it. I love uh, the fact that he came to practice and he's nervous. That just means yeah, somebody yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And uh, he's got a he's got one of the deepest. Greg has got a phenomenal pocket. He's a great drummer. I hated losing him. And Blake the same way, man. He's got such a deep pocket, and you, I can't teach. You can't teach pocket. You no. can teach dynamics, but you can't teach yeah. pocket. And this kid's got a crazy deep pocket. That's one of the main reasons we went with him is just because he's moldable into what we need him to be for the band, and he's in it for the long haul. So, you know, And you have to just, have that pocket for, for your all's music, man. You, you have to have that groove. You have to have that pocket. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and D-Boy, you know, the, our last drummer, is, he was a fun, he's a phenomenal drummer. Yeah. Um, and he's not doing much drummer from jail, but he's a phenomenal drummer. <laughs> and, and the thing was is his pocket... You know, we, we were always trying to get him to to settle back in that pocket and and get down off the top of the beat. And he was, he, I worked with him extensively, and he was really starting to, to come into his own and get that. And uh, you know, unfortunately, we had to we've had to move on. But uh, I'm really excited about getting Blake in. You know, he doesn't know the music real real well yet, but you know, he'll miss a few things here and there. But the great thing about it is he picks up on stuff real quick. So I would assume by the end of the weekend he'll be pretty solid already. Yeah, it won't take right. long, man. It yeah, actually would make right. sense because uh, my kids at their moms are in prospect. You playing at Captain Quarter, Captain's Quarters Sunday it might be an excuse yes. for me to hang out with my kiddos and go hang out at the big deck to watch. Yeah, come, come, come take a ride on the big deck and get some grease thrown on you. In the meantime, I'll <laughs> yeah, buy you we, a fireball while you're there. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, Sean. Uh, so you got your gigs lined up. Uh, long term, anything past this weekend you can hey, share with us? By the way, by the by the way, while we're on here, this is a good mm-hmm. opportunity. Anybody at any gig this weekend that mentions that they listen to Shooting from the Lip, this episode will get ten percent off of Soul Circus swag. So anybody nah. that comes to me and says, "I want a Soul Circus T-shirt." And and I heard you on shooting from the lip. I'll give you ten percent or yeah, ten percent off of, of t shirts. Oh there you go, man. I he's like that. It again. See, he's my man it. Sean is he 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 got he knows what he knows he has what to say to get at the beginning of the show. I think actually, Greg, no offense. I think we need a third co-host, and it's going to be Sean from uh-huh, the beginning uh-huh. to the end. <laughs> We're going to have him the host, so We're going to just do it. I'll just sit, sit over here and play with myself the entire time. Y'all have to do all the Well, you know what? I will, we'll, if, you, if you give us a heads up, like, okay, guys, the next five minutes, I'm choking it. You know, then it's all good. We'll take it, yeah, we'll take it from there. We'll take it from there. You better put that yeah. shit on mute. Trust me. No. It it's, sound like it's a, internet sound like radio. A we. We want to we want to hear that monkey groaning and all that good stuff. It's yeah. good radio. That's hilarious. All right, Sean. Sean, <laughs> you got a hell of a weekend lined up. Uh, I will. I will. We will do a fireball together over the weekend good. somehow, some good. way. Hey, oh, and, yeah. and by the way, while I'm on here, I want to give a big shout out to my girl Sylvia Walters. I know last time she was on, she uh, she mentioned me a few times. I didn't get to listen to the whole uh, show, but. Uh, I love great. her. I love her, and, and yeah, she's a yeah. great gal. And uh, yeah. uh, so, big shout out to her, and of course to you guys for keep doing what you're doing. I know you got a couple of thanks. of wonderful lady co-hosts, and of course Shannon Lee. But uh, you yeah. guys, uh, yeah. thanks for doing what you're doing, supporting local music. It's really important to guys like me uh, to be Absolutely. able to build our business, which is music. So, thank you very much. You, we, we just we want to give you the uh, platform that just lets you knock it out of the park. So, you know, well, help well, let us help you. It. Yeah. All right, Sean Wallace, the smooth soul man himself. Um, go get yourself ready for this weekend so we can, uh, you know, get on the big deck and uh, 
drink a few. Hell yeah, y'all come get some. Hey man, uh, we love will. you, buddy. Tell dad I said hey. Love you, Greg. Yeah. Uh, give me give a kiss to the wife for me. I will, man. <laughs> Take See care. You guys. Be good. See you. later. Uh, Greg, that's one of the coolest cats in town right now. <laughs> he wor- he I don't know, dog. man. I, he's been on a few shows. I mean, he just seems to just, he knows how to do a show. Well, yeah, and, well, <clears throat> you know, he, he is a, a very good front man. And, he is. I mean, when you got the gift of gab, you need that right. to be a front man in this particular type of band. <clears throat> and, you know, and he brings that, you know, and that's him. He brings that to the show, and and that's what you need, man. He's a, and he's he's a genuine cat, you know. And I he love Sean, man. He's a, yeah. we had a we had a really good time playing together, and I hope whenever they need me, I hope they call me some more because I have a great time playing with them. Cool. Speaking of uh, calling me, speaking of calling me, I actually got a text uh, during the show earlier from uh, Lindsay, Lindsay Hankin. Hanky. Yeah, she, she does she want to show in and weeks. promote herself? She she, got, she, uh, she wants uh, she just wanted to say that she had a great time last last uh, uh, well when she was on the show last and that, that she wanted to say hey and she was listening and uh, she's got a got a, a weekend coming up soon and uh, I told her that I'd get with her and uh, text her well, right now text her back because we've got technical Greg we have twenty eight minutes left twenty eight twenty eight minutes left to, oh wait a minute. Seven twenty-two. No, not twenty-eight. We're almost done. Um, so I think I only did it for eleven thirty. Ah, I don't know. Anyways, we're wrapping up. All right. So that's good stuff from um, Lindsey Hinkin. I do have to give a shout out to our guys, friends of mine, the Ass Haulers, Stephen Clark, Billy Masterson. They're going to be doing a gig. It's called Benefit for Deborah Adams. It's Sunday at 6 p.m. at the, the, where is it at? The 3rd Street Dive, Sunday at 6 to 11. My guys, the ass haulers, Stephen Clark, Billy Masterson, will be performing there. That's where I have to sneak off to be to watch the ass haulers Sunday. And, 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 and Kevin, where is the 3rd Street Dive? It's at 442 South 3rd Street. Actually, it probably shouldn't be too far from home for you. Street. So, yeah. well, I can meet you there Sunday for 30 minutes of the ass haulers, Greg. 30, 30 minutes of hauling ass. Yeah, 30 minutes of hauling ass. So that's that. Uh, you and I will be talking offline to get our shit together for the weekend. I notice my clock left is not right. Anyways, let's let's recap. Jenny Carr came on the first segment, singer-songwriter out of the born and raised in the Louisville area, currently residing in southern Indiana. She is a country voice. She's uh, got that raspy, I mean, just energetic uh, performance in her, and she's just one of my favorite people, people to watch, people to talk to. She's just a genuinely good person. Uh, we had Paul Lepre, owner of Ultra Pop. He's doing the the gig where uh, there it's a benefit for uh, Prince and David Bowie at his shop on uh, Barrett Avenue, Ultra Pop, and that's on Saturday. Uh, I think it's a very cool cool thing because as we talked, Prince and David Bowie. Musically, fashion, fashion perspective, sexuality, those guys crossed the line with everything. So that that gig or that that event for, for Paul at Ultra Pop should be yeah. over the top. <clears throat> yeah. And, and then we had our man, Sean Wallace, come on. Soul Circus, last segment, came on and killed it. He's... He is the front man for Soul Circus. He is the man for Wallace and the Groove Hounds. Um, he is a... Go ahead. Yeah, well, something about Sean. Uh, he also uh, you know, gets involved in, in a lot of the, um, the benefits that goes on around, uh, around 
downtown. Uh, he, he is involved in the, in the MRF benefits as well. I think he may even be on a committee, if I'm not mistaken, uh, to put together uh, MRF benefits shows. If, if any of our listeners are not familiar with MRF, it's, it's a musician's emergency relief fund. Uh, a foundation, and what they do is uh, for for the musicians out there who doesn't have insurance because they are musicians, and 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 uh, they they scrape to live to provide the music for for our life. Um, whenever they have issues, um, they can call these musicians can call upon Murph and, and ask for money, um, and uh, benefits are always going on. To help provide this this money, and it's uh, it's a very helpful thing, and it's helped out uh, a lots of musicians in the past, and 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 hopefully in the future, uh, Sean does get involved with that as well. Um, so yeah, anytime you see a Murph benefit going on, stop in and, and check it out. You know, it, it's it's another great cause. You know, we're all about good causes here on shooting from the lips. So um, Sean's always involved in things of that nature as well. And no time were any animals or people hurt during this presentation of Shooting from the Lip. Hey, this is Tony with Caribbean Streamland. We're playing TK's Pub this weekend. Why don't you come out and join us?